In this video, I will explain everything you need to know if you're a beginner in the sport. I'll be going over what equipment you need to use, what to expect at practices, meets, and tournaments, and also what traits actually helped me at the very beginning of my wrestling and what traits I use, you know, still to today. So let's say you're just, you know, a beginner in wrestling, it's like your first day, and first things off, you need to have the right equipment. So the equipment that you need to buy in the sport of wrestling, you need wrestling shoes, you need wrestling headgear, and you also need about five pairs of workout clothes. Now I suggest like dry fit, kind of like this feeling, um, just because you know, you're gonna be sweating a lot in wrestling. I mean, if you don't sweat, I don't think you can not sweat out of practice, but your clothes are gonna be pretty sweaty, so make sure they're not like your you know ultimate favorite clothes. And then just like any athletic short or basketball short, that would, you know, definitely work. But you can also wear like kind of wrestling joggers if you don't want to wear shorts because, you know, especially in the sport of wrestling, skin funk, which is kind of like skin diseases, is kind of a big deal. Now, it's not like it's a big deal if you get it. It's just that it's really big in the wrestling community for like, you know, usually in your lifetime, you'd ought to have, you know, ringworm or empatigo or something and you usually get it off the mat or from like another opponent. Now, I'll explain this whole later with the skin funk and everything, but we're just going to slowly go down the list. So some more equipment you need is a wrestling bag. And in this wrestling bag, um, I'll show you it. So this is what my wrestling bag looks like. It's not like a backpack or anything. I mean, of course, you got the straps. It's a freaking backpack. Uh, but, you know, it's definitely kind of weird. Uh, the brand Cliff Keen makes these and also Rudis Wrestling makes really good wrestling bags. Uh, but inside, I keep my wrestling shoes. I keep my singlet. I keep anything that I would, you know, need in there. So this goes along with medical supplies, you know, maybe you need some medicine like ibuprofen if you're not feeling well. Um, and then I just put like extra food in there, maybe some money if I want to buy something at concessions. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much you just need in a bag. So a lot of people are, are, you know, going into their first wrestling practice. They're like, oh my God, this is, you know, just a new environment. This is super crazy. Uh, but I will tell you exactly what to expect in a wrestling practice. So of course, wear your, you know, your workout gear, your shorts or shirt and pants, um, but especially wear long socks. Now, um, for wrestling shoes, you know, they kind of cut off at your ankle or whatever. And if you wear short socks uh, to wrestling, um, it kind of looks like you're not wearing socks in your shoes. And it's just kind of weird. I don't know. It's kind of like a pet peeve of mine. I always have to wear long socks with my wrestling shoes. And also because your ankle actually might get like rubbed raw from like the wrestling shoe, which it's not like the wrestling shoe's fault. It's just what'll happen in the sport of wrestling because your feet are, you know, always moving. Now, you don't usually wear your singlet to a wrestling practice. I know, you know, a lot of like Olympic athletes actually wear like their singlets in practice because, um, you know, they say they practice, how you practice is how you compete. So if they practice in their singlet, they're not like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to wrestle so much different because I'm in a singlet now. Um, but, you know, in general, I mean, just wear your workout shirt, workout, you know, shorts, anything like that. So usually in a practice, what they'll start off with is some warm ups. So usually you'll be running or doing some like arm circles or doing, you know, like tumbling, kind of like somersaults, cartwheels, just to get your body going and then after you do some like little warm-ups you're going to go into stretching now at this one wrestling academy I go to we don't do stretching uh, but at my high school you know we definitely do stretching uh, so you should do your arms legs back neck everything like that you know just get your body up and going now after that you're usually gonna go into some technique because you know it's the first practice so your coach you know will have you know a buddy to do example moves on and he will show you how to do you know maybe a setup to a shot like a double leg and he'll show you it he'll probably go really slow and then They'll tell you to go off in a partner. You choose a partner, uh, pretty much anyone you want. Um, you guys can be the same size or you could be different size, uh, but just realize that if you're with a lighter opponent, make sure to you know treat him as a lighter opponent and because you know no one wants to get hurt on the first day of wrestling practice. But then, you know, you're going to try your best. I suggest go slow till you know. That should be going through your head at all points during that practice is because if you're just like the first day of practice and you're like, okay, I got to go fast. You know, this is wrestling and you do it. Your technique is going to be way off. I can, you know, highly suggest that it's going to be way off. Um, so just slow till you know, and then slowly build it up. I'm sure your coach will walk around and, you know, give you hints. Maybe if you have a question on what to grab, you know, what to do. I mean, of course they'll answer that. So once you get like the technique done, you're going to go into drilling. So what drilling is, is doing the same move over and over again. So it's kind of like insanity. Um, so it's pretty much muscle memory. So once you do something long enough, you'll like never forget it. You know, once you learn how to ride your bike, you never forget it. Once you learn to do a new wrestling move, you usually won't forget it, but it's especially good if you do it, you know, days and days, you know, even weeks or months in a row, and then you'll never forget that move. You'll know exactly every technique that you'll need to know through drilling. And this will usually go for maybe, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes each move. I mean, it all depends on your coach and it'll really help you perfect the move in the long run. You know, after warm-ups, after technique, after drilling, your coach will usually put you guys in live goes. So what live goes is, you know, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's live, it's wrestling, you know, hard as you can. I mean, 
you know, it's you and another guy in practice, you guys are going head to head. Now, when doing this, usually people on their first practice, they always go in for a shot. They're always, you know, trying to shoot as much times as they can. But the key is to wear out your opponent. So you can do this by hitting their head, by circling them, pushing him, pulling him in. I mean, just setting them up, maybe doing some fake shots. You know, keep that pressure on that head because once your opponent is tired, it's so much easier to take a shot and end up taking him down. And also, when you're going in live, try to keep track of the score in your mind so that you can get used to doing this in a real wrestling match when you don't have to look over at the scoreboard because you already know the score and you know what you need to do. And also remember, if you get stuck in a position and you don't know what to do, and maybe you know your coach is going you know quick through live goes, at the end of practice, ask him questions. Ask him what, you know, how do I get out of this move? How do I do this better? He was doing this to me. How can I, you know, you know, defend that? And your coach will, you know, I'm sure answer that question and it'll make you a so much better wrestler, you know, just from that. So now talking a little bit about the wrestling scoring. Um, so what a takedown is, a takedown is two points. So this is where you guys are both are neutral, you're both standing up. If one person takes the other guy down and lands on top of him, that's two points for the person that took him down. So what it, what it is is a major decision. At the end of the match, if you're winning by between 8 to 14 points, that's called a major decision. And if you win by more than 15, that's kind of like a mercy rule and it's called a tech fall. Now, if you pin him, kind of your shoulder blades need to be, you know, directly flat on the mat for about two and a half seconds. Of course, they, you know, they go one, two, three. But if you can see you're flat, you're pinned, you're pinned. But a takedown is two points. Uh, an escape is if you're on bottom and you escape, that's one point. Um, a reversal is if you're on bottom and you do a move so that you kind of flip positions. Now you're on top and he's on bottom. When you started on bottom, that's two points for you. Now if you get back points, let's say you kind of are trying to pin a guy but he's not necessarily pinned, it's called near fall points. So what this is, if it's, you know, I think, yeah, if it's three seconds, you get two points, but then if it's five seconds, you get three points. And I know this is kind of confusing to me because I feel like I should definitely know this, uh, but it's kind of weird because sometimes ref do two swipes and they give you two points, and sometimes if they give you three swipes, you get three points. It's really confusing. I guess it's, I don't know, it's just kind of weird, uh, but just know that there's two point near falls and there's three point near falls. Escape is one point, take down two points, and reversal two points. And then, of course, if you pin him, you pin him, and then the match is over. So this is especially valuable in a wrestling tournament or a wrestling meet for your team. If you win a, by a decision, which is between uh, one to seven points, that is three points for your for your whole team score. If you do a major decision, which is again, eight to 14 points, you get four points for your team. And of course, if you tech fall him, that's five points for your team. But if you pin him, that's six points for your wrestling team. And of course, you know, the goal is to get, you know, that pin so you can get more points for your team. So now going in uh, to this next segment, there is practices, there's wrestling meets, and there's wrestling tournaments. So of course on a practice, I told you what to expect in a practice. Now what to expect in a wrestling meet, this is usually only if you're kind of in high school wrestling because I know youth wrestlers, they don't really have wrestling meets, um, but in high school we have wrestling meets, and what this is, it's your team versus another team, and it's, it's you know, it's a dual meet. So what it is, there's a wrestling mat in the middle and there's two sets of chairs and you got fans on both sides. Now this is a really surreal moment too because if you guys even have a spotlight at your high school that we do, it's so cool. They turn off the lights, the spotlight comes down and it's just two wrestlers just brawling it out. Whoever wins, wins and it's just super exciting. So again, as the wrestling meet, you only have one match that entire night if you're on varsity. I think JV, they do a couple matches, but on varsity, it's one match. So you gotta make sure to have a good warm up, get your head mentally prepared and that this six minutes is gonna be a war. Um, usually they'll have walkout music. The home team, the home team kid, when they're walking up to the, uh, you know, to the scores table, um, they'll actually have your walkout music playing, and that's super, super surreal. It gets the audience in it. You know, it's just super exciting. It kind of builds you up, which is really cool. And of course, you get if you guys have an intense crowd, they're always cheering up on their feet. I mean, you get going, and you're gonna get ready, you know, to fight. So now let's say you wrestle your match, you know, you won, you lost, whatever, you're done. Make sure to get a good cool down. So what a cool down is, it's, you know, running back and forth, maybe doing, you know, some workouts in the back, in the, you know, behind the chairs, because what this will actually do is it'll help you get out the lactic acid. Um, so that's what causes your muscles to actually get sore. So by doing this, running back and forth, you know, slowly cooling down, it'll help to, you know, make sure to get the lactic acid out of your system so you're not sore for the next day, maybe, you know, the next practice. So that's pretty much everything you should expect at a wrestling meet. So for a wrestling tournament, this is actually a little bit different. 
So of course, a tournament, you have multiple matches. So usually you wrestle, I think about four to five uh, is what we kind of wrestle in a day for a wrestling tournament. Of course, there's, you know, there's two day tournaments. You know, of course, we just have a lot of one day tournaments. Now, usually, I mean, there can be like 16 teams there. There can be 50 teams there. It all depends kind of what tournament you're going to. So I highly suggest that you bring extra food, kind of granola bars, power bars, stuff like that. And you also bring, you know, extra water, extra Gatorade, because you don't want to be spending all this money at the concessions because, you know, they probably overprice it. So usually after your first match, it's an hour between matches. So what they do is they start from the lowest weight and they work their all the way up, you know, to 285 and then they kind of restart it. That's kind of usually how it goes. So always remember if, you know, your weight is in the hole, I mean, you should already be up and going and start to warm up. Now, I did forget to say this at the beginning, but for a meet and a wrestling tournament, you're definitely going to warm up as a meet, you know, in your probably your own wrestling room, and you're going to warm up just kind of like maybe 30 minutes like a regular practice, get your, you know, get the sweat going, get your body warmed up, and also before tournament, you guys will have, you know, a little practice to get yourself warmed up. But this is right before you, you know, you wrestle, you're in the hole, you know, you're the next two guys up. So some things that you can get warmed up when you're waiting to wrestle is you can do squat jumps, you can do stretching, you can kind of pace back and forth, you can go mentally in your head, you know, your top moves, what you're going to do if he does this, you know, maybe he does this, how are you going to defend it? But I believe the key is, and what I think I should, you know, definitely do more this year is to get a sweat going before every single match. Because what this will do, it'll get your body, you know, all warm. Usually the other guys, you know, he's cold, he's not warming up. His muscles won't react as fast as you because you're already sweaty, you're warmed up, and you're ready to go. And because you're wrestling four, five, six matches in a day, you want to pin that kid and you want to get off the mat so that you, you can get ready, you know, for the next match, the semifinals, the finals. Because the less energy you, you know, exert in a tournament, the more energy you'll have for that one match of that, you know, that really good kid. And another thing that I have to explain is in a wrestling tournament, you want to be a competitor and not a wrestling fan. So going to these tournaments, of course, there's going to be a lot of good kids. You know, maybe there's like a state champ or you got, you know, you got a national champ in this tournament. You know, you got a D1 wrestling commit. You know, you want to watch him. You want to see what he does. And you're kind of, you know, a wrestling fan. And you want to see how he wrestles and everything like that, even if he's not in your weight class. But the key is you're a competitor. You're trying to win this tournament. At least I hope you guys are trying to win uh, this tournament. But the key is to be a wrestling competitor not as much a wrestling fan. Okay guys, so for this next uh, part of this video is talking a little bit about cutting weight. Now, of course, in the wrestling community, um, a lot of people actually look down upon cutting weight, but at the end of the day, everyone kind of cuts weight, and by what cutting weight is, it's kind of shaving the weight off, you know, it's just so like kind of you're losing like body fat and kind of water weight so that you can wrestle at a lower weight class. So people do this to, you know, usually wrestle kids that are, you know, smaller than them, maybe a little bit weaker than them, but they, at the end of the day, everyone is kind of cutting weight, so you guys are kind of all wrestling technically the same people that you would have if no one has cut weight. But I like to think about this as actually watching your weight and kind of watching what you eat. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I guess for me, especially since if you, you know, you wrestle like five times a week, I'm burning, you know, let's say a thousand calories every practice. I, I do personally eat a lot. I eat a lot of snacks. I do eat, you know, a decent amount of like ice cream cones and just like kind of like ice cream pops, little things we have. I mean, they're just so good. And I mean, if I can just eat them and not gain too much weight, you know, of course I eat them. But at the end of the day, once I'm cutting weight, or watching my weight, I do of course eat less. I don't eat, you know, breakfast or lunch. I go on to an intermittent fasting diet and I actually posted in a video. And I think it was about, you know, five, six months ago, I was talking about, you know, your wrestling diet and what kind of my diet is. But some things to eat that will help you lose weight is cooked broccoli, cooked cauliflower, literally just heat up a big plate, like a whole cauliflower head. I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys will not be able to finish because it is a lot of food and only for like 100 calories for like, that'll fill you up, you know, for pretty much the whole day, it'll, you know, just make you lose so much weight, it's not even funny. And especially what helps me actually lose a lot of weight is drinking. So you wanna start, building up your weight to a gallon of water. Usually we drink, at least I think I was drinking about maybe 80 ounces, 50 ounces a day regularly. But once you get up to 128 ounces, which is one gallon of water, I saw my weight, you know, just go down. Like it's just skyrocketed down. <laughs> But eventually what you can do is you can slowly build up to two gallons of water, which I don't think I could even do. Um, and don't be stupid with this too, because this is a big deal. And if you do drink too much water, you could, you know, definitely die. So just be smart about it, know your body and know your limitations. 
So let's say you're a week out from a wrestling tournament. That's usually when I start to, you know, cut weight, watch weight. So what I'll usually do is I'll drink, you know, the most water from maybe the three or four days. And then the rest three, I kind of cut, cut out my water a lot. And what this will do, it'll get my body, you know, used to getting rid of it. So I'll just still be going to the bathroom a lot, even though I'm not even drinking any water. So your weight just, you know, magically kind of falls off, especially in wrestling practice. You're so used to sweating. Your body will still sweat, you know, all that sweat out, even though you haven't been drinking, which is usually how, you know, I can, you know, drop to like a lower weight. Now, if you're a youth wrestler, I highly suggest you do not cut weight at all. Like, don't, like, go a week out and just, you know, stop eating and whatever. I mean, you guys are growing kids in youth wrestling. At the end of the day, of course, youth wrestling, of course, your matches are big matches. But, guys, don't, like, hurt your body. Don't harm your body by not eating, especially when you're, like, a kid growing up, you know, especially once you go through puberty and everything. I mean, you guys... You need to gain muscle. You need to gain, you know, height and everything. I mean, I think that's why I'm too short. I need to grow a little bit here. But guys, pretty much if you're a youth wrestler, just wrestler, just wrestle at whatever weight. I mean, if maybe if you're like two pounds over, of course, I mean, I'm sure you can go down, but don't drop like 10 pounds or, you know, even like seven, six, five pounds. Don't do that. Just wrestle at, you know, your normal weight. Now for high schoolers, this is usually what kids will have to do because maybe there's a good guy at this upper weight and usually a lot of kids are cutting down, you know, 10, 15, maybe even 20 pounds, which is super crazy, but people do do it. And at the end of the day, everyone wants to get to that lower weight so they can wrestle, you know, opponents not, you know, as big, not as strong um, again. Um, but I do highly suggest to be smart about it. Don't cut too much because if you do cut too much, you won't be able to wrestle at, you know, your best ability. All right, guys, so now at the beginning of the video, I kind of talked a little bit about skin funk and kind of skin diseases on the wrestling mat. Um, so I kind of want to talk about that for a little bit. So usually what uh, your wrestling coach for, thankfully for our team, my grandfather, actually he's our assistant uh, head wrestling coach. What he does is every day that he cleans the wrestling mat so that we won't, you know, pick up these skin diseases and skin infections. So some skin diseases that wrestlers, you know, might have is uh, ringworm, which is kind of like a ring around your skin. And it's not like there's a worm in there, but you can go to um, Walgreens and get like I think it's like cortisone or something like that you can put it on and it'll, it'll like take it off um, but I highly suggest that if you get this you tell your coach and you know you ask him you know if you should still come to wrestling practice I mean still watch and everything but you might just be able to tape it and you know get away with it I mean it probably won't get on the mat if you tape it and put stuff on it because it is you know kind of contagious so you don't want to get you know wrestlers on your team you don't want to give other wrestlers you know this disease and also another disease is empatigo now, I actually had this on my hairline, um, I think in about sixth grade, and what happened is that it's kind of like this, um, it's kind of like a scab, but what it does, it kind of gets like pussy and stuff. It's really just, it's really disgusting. And so I kind of had long hair, so I would just like comb my hair, and I would keep like hitting my, uh, and I would keep hitting like the empatigo, and it was just super bad. It made everything worse. Um, but especially if you have empatigo, if, you know, definitely go to a doctor because they will give you, you know, stuff to apply on it because I don't think you can get uh, empatigo stuff over the counter. You're gonna have to go to a doctor for that. Um, but if you have a skin, you know, disease or infection on your skin, go ask your coach, say, hey, what should I do for this? Should I go to the doctor? You know, should I wrestle this practice? But definitely if you have anything, make sure you tape it up so that you don't get anything on the mat or anything like that. And then just, you know, definitely take hot soapy showers, guys, when you get home. Especially, you know, even if you're, you know, at the high school, if you got a shower after practice, definitely get a good shower in. You know, definitely get all parts of your hair, you know, with shampoo, everything, wash down literally every thing with soap and definitely you know just sit in there and just soak you know the soap in so that you know even if you had like you know hard wrestling practice no skin infections will be on you so now I'm just gonna list off some characteristics that I actually gained throughout the sport of wrestling and that what I think if you have in the back of your mind you can develop these traits and eventually you know be a better wrestler so some things that come off the top of my head, you have to be very self-motivated because there's not going to be a lot of people that are like, oh my gosh, you're so good. You can do it. You're the next state champ. You know, you're the next Jordan Burroughs. You got to be self-motivated. You got to be in your head. You got to be positive in your head. Also, you have to be very ambitious. You got to set your goals high because let's say you set a goal of making it to state. Once you make it to state, you know what happens. You're, it's not like you're going to win state because that wasn't your goal. You're only limited by the goals that you set. So set high, high, high goals. Let's say you want to be a state champion. Maybe have it that you want to be a national champ. Maybe you want to do a, you know, an All-American because once you get to that All-American level, odds are you're going to win state on the way to that All-American you know, all level, which will you know, definitely help you in the long run. 
So also the ability to actually have fun in this hard sport will help you out tremendously because it won't feel as much of a grind as going into every practice, you know, every single day, you know, for weeks straight. I mean, you're, you know, your body's hurting, maybe your records, you know, hurting, but having fun and actually, you know, enjoying what you're doing, knowing why you're wrestling, kind of having it, that in the back of your head that, you know, you know, this is fun. I'm hanging out with my friends. I'm learning, you know, this new sport, you know, I'm getting fit because you'll definitely get fit once you start wrestling. And also having a lot of empathy when it comes to the sport of wrestling. So what I mean by this is because, you know, a lot of people think that in wrestling, you know, you either win or lose. And sometimes that's just not the case. Of course, if you win a wrestling match, you know, you win the wrestling match. But let's say you lose a wrestling match. Let's say you knew it was a guy that, you know, was really good. You know, you'd have a t you know, tough time with him. Let's say he beat you. Maybe a win could be going into that match. You just could say, I want to score this amount of points. I want to be the first person to take the shot. I want to be the most aggressive in that match. I don't want to give up, you know. I don't want to give up ever in that match. I don't want to get pinned. Maybe it could, you know, be your goal. Of course, you know, going into the match, you should, you know, expect to win every match, but to also be real with yourself and understand that, hey, if I beat this guy, have empathy because you know what it feels like when you lose, right? No one likes to lose. No one likes to lose. Now, of course, people say they like to lose because they learn a lot more than they lose, but at the end of the day, you know what it feels like, you know, if you've lost before and you know how much it sucks. So have empathy for that other person to say, hey, man, you know, keep it up keep up the grind you know we're kind of in this together you know we're kind of all of our all of us wrestlers are kind of in this together because at the end of the day if we didn't have you know the numbers of all this wrestling you know all the wrestling like wrestling wouldn't even be a sport you know I, you know, you'd have to have people that to win the tournament, you need to have people at the bottom. But that doesn't mean that the people at the bottom will always have to stay in the bottom. It's always about working the hardest. Who's the hardest worker in the room? You know, what are you going to sacrifice, you know, to be at the top? You know, what are they doing that you're not doing? And then you learn from that. And then at the end of the day, you get to be a better wrestler. And also be a, by being a better wrestler, you could also be a better person. And guys, when you lose to, don't be so upset. I mean, of course, you know, when I lost big matches, of course, I'm, I'm definitely not like crying, like bawling my eyes out. But of course, my eyes are watering and I'm just like, like, wow, I can't believe that happened, especially uh, quite in you know recent months. But guys, I learned so much about myself um, from losing than I have winning. Like, I can win all the wrestling matches, but I would not be the person I am today if I haven't lost big wrestling matches. And I don't want to say I'm glad that I lost these wrestling matches, but I can say that I'm glad for the opportunity to learn from my mistakes and be better from that. So guys, that's kind of everything you need to expect when starting the sport of wrestling. I really hope that everyone watching this video, you know, is definitely a wrestler or will be a wrestler in the near future. You know, get your kids in wrestling. I mean, if you got parents out here watching, get your brothers, get your siblings into it. You know, uh, girls wrestling is, you know, booming these days. I mean, there's, you know, so much numbers in that. Uh, but this has been the ultimate beginner's guide to wrestling. If you did in like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment. I respond to every single comment, guys. Follow my Instagram at Kate and Hensel. You guys can DM me anything. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.